All right, I think we're going to get started. Thank you all for coming. Um, this is Mighty Morphin Data Types, which it's less about data types and more about Morphin, but I needed four words for it to be a parody of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, so that's where we end up. Sorry, one more thing. Completely neglected to plug this in. All right. Okay, so this, uh, we're talking about morphisms here, okay? And morphisms is this gigantic topic that spans all kinds of mathematics. Uh, different branches of mathematics do not agree on words or terms. So this is a huge topic. We're talking about some small little sliver that kind of sometimes applies to programming. If that makes sense, right? You'll hear these words, like hopefully everyone here is, is here because they've heard blah, 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 homomorphism, blah, 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 endomorphism. And you're like, OK, that's a thing. So we're taking, we're going to look at this in a, it can mean these things. And it may mean multiple things. You may have to ask, exactly what do you mean here, right? Because these are very general terms. And they're, they're big, high-level concepts. They're not specific type signatures. Even though you can go into libraries that say high-low or endo or ISO, they will have a specific type signature. They've made a choice. They've said, we've opted into this interpretation of this idea. But these are big picture ideas. Also, I'm not a real big fan of like category theory, all the things. Like category theory is cool, and we have drawn a lot of inspiration from it as a community. That does not mean that category theory is the solution to all our problems. So if you come out of this and you're like, eh, I kind of have a sense of what those things are, you're good. You're fine. That, no problem. You, this will not stop you from writing your programs. Like, this will not stop you from converting your company to X language, Haskell or Scala or F Sharp or Clojure or whatever, right? These are just interesting things that may be useful when having discussions about large abstract ideas. That's my pitch. So, no one here should feel like this is not like a, you all have an undergraduate in mathematics, right? You know, okay, we'll continue now. It isn't anything like that. <laughs> so, we're going to start off with the morphism. A morphism. Uh, that's the morphism. The Red Ranger gets into his Zord. We have a function from Red Ranger to Zord. That is a morphism. Okay? This is A to B. Everyone's seen A to B, right? These type signatures, I should say. So this is a Haskell-style type signature. It means the input is an A, the output is a B. For anyone not familiar with that type signature. Okay? So that's all morphism is. Thing to thing. We've all written these. These are called functions. We use these a lot, hopefully, if we're functional programmers. Now, there's nothing to say that has to be the A has to be literally a single, uh, like, concrete type. It can be a much more sophisticated type. So you can have that type to that type, whatever that is, right? That's still a morphism, right? Thing to thing. More broadly, if you go look up category theory, they'll say a morphism is a mapping from an object in a category to an object in another category, or something like that. For our perspective, that's like math, right? And that applies to all kinds of things. From our perspective, it means goes from this type to that type. That's all morphism is. I don't want to move forward. Um, if there's any questions, don't wait till the end. Ask them immediately. Like, as I'm talking mid-sentence, just ask your questions. So anything about morphisms? We'll go back. We'll stay here. Anything about morphisms? Because this is, this is hopefully the easiest one. It'll get more complex from here. We're good? OK. Here's some examples of morphisms. Length is a morphism from an array of something to an uh, int, for example, to string, paying an invoice. E pretty much everything you do all day long is morphisms, right? It's hard to think of anything you do that's not a morphism. OK, an endomorphism. A yellow ranger to a yellow ranger is an endomorphism. The type has stayed the same. So what do you predict this type signature will say? A to A. A, to A. You are absolutely correct. That's an endomorphism. Endo meaning like same self. So morphism here is like a shape. Endo being same. Well, not quite. There, there's also homo, which means same. At this particular usage of endo means same type. So if you start and end at the same type, you have an endomorphism. Okay. Um, examples of endomorphisms. If we're going to capitalize the string, that's string string makes sense, right? For adding one string to string, taking the floor. If we're appending. What's well, a list of A to a list of A? Still an endomorphism. A cool aspect of endomorphisms is that uh, endomorphisms, uh, because they're A to A, are often uh, monoids. They're, they're appendable to each other. They can be combined. Right? You, you go and have an A to A. You can then 
hook another A on there, and you just kind of keep going. OK. As with before, our A to B, the A doesn't have to be a, a solid concrete type. So there is a sense of endomorphism in which here the M has stayed the same, but the A and the B has switched, but we're still M. So we're still in endomorphism. Like our type has stayed the same. So this is where it's like interpretations vary, right? Yes? This would not, so it's monoidal in the M, but not in the AB, right? So now it gets into like specific type systems and, and how would that work? And, and that's a good point because it speaks to why um, everyone's heard the joke that is horrible and I hate that monads are just a monoid in the category of endofunctors, right? So we know what an endomorphism is, so we could guess what an endofunctor is, be a functor that keeps the type the same, right? So we can look at this, and um, the signature bind says, if I give you an A, you'll give me an MB, and therefore I can take an MBA, an MA, take the A out, run it through that function, and end up with an MB. And this is monadic bind. This is how monads like chain together and, and connect, right? And the whole like monads are a monoid in a category of endofunctor thing comes in where bind can be um, written in terms of these two functions, map, like the normal map that you hopefully have seen, and this other thing called join. Well, this is the endofunctor part because the M stayed the same, right, between the two. And here's the monoid part, because we took an M of M of A, and we squished the M's together, the structure of the M's together, and got just an M of A. So monads don't implement the monoid type class in Haskell, right? Because they're not monoids in that sense, as you brought up. That it, we go from M of A to M of B, and that doesn't work for monoids in, in like a Haskell type class. But from a larger mathematical kind of concept, monads are monoids with an endofunctor. Does that kind of make sense? And now you can, like, when you hear that joke, you can be like, yeah, it's dumb. Go away. <laughs> Any questions on endofunctors? Or endomorphisms, I'm sorry. Is this, like, easy or boring or too complex? Perfect. Okay. We'll keep going. We're the middle bear in Goldilocks. Homomorphism. So homo has that same sort of connotation as endo in that it's, there's a same property to it. So in this case, what stays the same is not the type, it's the structure. So if we go from the original set of Power Rangers Zords to the, I don't remember which one it was, one of the other ones, the <laughs> dinosaur one, Zords, we have five Rangers in their Zords to five Rangers in their Zords. We have maintained some concept of structure between these even though they may be different types, right? So we can move between them. And technically, let's see, do I have written down the technical? OK, I don't. Uh, if you go look on category theory uh, websites, you'll see wonderfully complex uh, descriptions for what a homomorphism is. It's a uh, structure preserving map between categories, something, something to that effect. Now, a pretty f common formulation of this idea is to say, if I have an f of a and I can go to an f of b, I preserve structure, right? The f has stayed the same, so I'm structure preserving. And you hopefully recognize that part of a signature that comes from something else. It comes from, <laughs> it comes from an extra slide that I forgot to delete. Uh, it comes from map, right? So the, the only part that's missing here, so map is the way we do a homomorphism, and of course we have to tell it what the specific homomorphism is here, right? So once map's been supplied with this, it now can, is a magical FA to FB machine, and thus is a homomorphism. So map is the canonical kind of example when you're talking about this. But like with a lot of these things, that's a interpretation, and it kind of is a little more uh, squishy than that. So a couple examples. If we have a list of A, we can go to a list of B. If we have a maybe, we can, we can map that in, in most languages. We have a future or a promise or a stream or there's all kinds of things that are mappable, right? Those all have this homomorphism. Preserves the, what, the first thing and the second thing is allowed to vary. Okay. Um, but it's a little more complicated than that because <laughs> in a lot of branches of mathematics, a homomorphism is the, an, another word for uh, morphism. <laughs> Morphisms and homomorphisms are just the same thing. They're like aliases to each other. And uh, in some cases, like what you could consider A to A to be a homomorphism depending on what you consider structure. Like, what's the thing that matters to you? Like, could you have a string to string that's not a homomorphism? 
Well, if the structure that you're throwing away is not preserved by that string translation, it's not a homomorphism from that point of view, even though the type says it's A to A. Does that kind of make sense? OK. So if we are to, j to JSON uh, some object and we produce JSON, is that, does that seem likely that that could be a homomorphism? Like, would we have, we've clearly gone between types. You've got an object to JSON. So that's not a, a map, right? Like a, the type signature of map. But is that a homomorphism? I mean, if we do it right, hopefully, <laughs> if everything in that object can be represented in that JSON, we're OK. If we have some weird function that gives us an empty JSON object at the end, then no, that doesn't work. So it's going to really depend, right? The type signatures will not at all tell us this in pretty much any language that I think any of us are working in. I don't even know how you, I mean, you could probably do that in Idris or, or Cock or something. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way to in, encode that. Um, what about to list? If you have an array of things and you produce a list of things, what's the structure that we care about? Order, number of elements. Those, those are actually like could be two separate structures. We might care about both of those. That might be the structure that we care about. So it's totally possible and reasonable that to list is a, is a homomorphism. Um, what about to set? So sets probably discard duplicates, if it's a good set, right? If it's a proper set. Uh, do sets maintain order? Nope. If it's a good set, it doesn't maintain order, or doesn't allow you to uh, care about order, right? Uh, so if we, if we're, it could be a homomorphism between a collection of elements, a non-duplicating collection of elements, and another non-duplicating collection of elements. But if we're relying on some of the list structureness of order, uh, dupl allowing duplicates, then that, that would fail the homomorphism test. And what about to bag? Where bag is just, you know, uh, like a dictionary that only has the keys <laughs> kind of thing, or only has the values, right? So this doesn't... Still wouldn't preserve order, could preserve duplicates. So again, it, it matters what we care about, right? So it depends is going to be a... You're going to hear a lot of that. And uh, add element, like I said, um, string to string, it's the same type, <laughs> which is weird. Um, if we have a comma separated list of values embedded in a string and we add another element with a comma, then it's totally possible that we've preserved our structure, which is we can get those elements back out. Right? And we could do things like list of strings and, and vice versa, right? Because that we could preserve the structure that we care about. Um, you don't have to be able to reverse it. Um, Often you can, which we'll get to, which is a different thing. But you, it's not required that you reverse it. So you can have a one-way homomorphism that preserves. So for example, what if I say I had two list that was on array of strings and produced a list of strings, and it kept all the items in the same order and the same number of items, but it called uh, like upper, uh, like down case on every one of the items. That would not be reversible, but it would preserve the order and uh, number of elements. So that would be a homomorphism. Or it could be a homomorphism. Those are the things we care about. It all comes down to like, what is your, your context that you care about? Yes, sir. Also, for example, two set, if you implement it as returning an empty set for whatever you give it, that it would be a homomorphism, like a trivial one. Uh, it would be a, a homomorphism. But would it have preserved your structure, is the question. Like, what structure do you care about that an empty set satisfies? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that, but, but it wouldn't, if it's an empty set, it hasn't really preserved an essential characteristic of the, the input. Unless you care about it just being, having the concept of a, a set-like property, in which case that could be okay. So it's going to depend on what you care about, like the specifics of in what context do we care about this being a homomorphism. So I actually don't fully really understand why add element is a homomorphism. Like if we're adding an element to the string, is that, how is that pre preserving structure? Oh, I'm sorry. Not like oh, I'm sorry. Um, right. You make a good point. I said that incorrectly. Um, we could transfer it. We could, we could go from string to string, and we could do something to all the elements and keep like commas between them and get a new thing with commas in between them and still be able to know that there's still some structure right, to them in the same way that we went from an object to JSON. Uh, but you're right. Adding would be, um, that would not be directly a homomorphism. Be 
But reversibility is not important for homomorphisms. Right, right. I know, but yeah. you know, you, you, okay, so you have lost one thing, which is the length in that case, but you still have the order of all the other. Things. Right, so again, it comes back to what structure do you care about? What are the things that are important to you? And then you can look at it and say, does this morphism take care of that? Or does it not? OK, isomorphisms. If you are a Power Ranger and you get into your suit, that is a morphism. If you can then get out of your suit and go back, you have an isomorphism. right? So it's a morphism that can go the other direction. So what do we expect this to look like? So I heard A to B to A, A to B, and then another one, independent one, that's B to A. So you have two functions here. It's tricky. And whoops. Uh, oh, uh, right. So when you look up the documentation on this, they're going to tell you that a isomorphism is a bijective homomorphism. And I was like, great. And then they said, oh, yeah, it's, it's um, surjective. And I was like, fantastic. So I bothered to learn what these things are so I can explain to you. So. <laughs> Um, let's start with um, bijection. <laughs> bijection says every element in Y here came through your function from X. So every, every value came, uh, came directly. I'm sorry. That is injection. <laughs> injection, every element came from X. Or, I'm sorry, I'm saying it's That is bijection. Injection is every element. See, now I'm completely messing this up. I've forgotten. Uh, this is an element, th this says every element uh, here maps to an element here, right? There's nothing like missing over here. There's no arrow that goes to the question mark. And this says there is a, like a one-to-one, -one. like nothing here didn't come from over here. Does that make sense? So that's your bijection and injection. And if you put them together, you get surjection. So it's everything in Y came from X and X only goes, X, everything X goes to Y. And if you throw a surjection and make it surjective on a homomorphism, what you end up with is two functions that go in opposite directions. That's all that means. Two functions go in opposite directions. So surjective means that uh, all of the elements on the right-hand side have an arrow coming from the left. From the left side. Yeah. And every element on the left-hand side goes to an element on the right-hand side. Well, that's true for any function. But, but yeah. It, Uh, right. I believe that's correct. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I, st I was with Bijek. These are the starter ones. I was going to the complex one. Yeah, those two together is this. I said that backwards. Surjection is, yes, Y goes to an X, but you can have multiple. In injection, you only have a one-to-one, -one, and here you have both. Okay. So, A to B, B to A. Oh, did you have a question? I don't know what monotonic would mean in this context. Like, what, what is monotonically increasing? Like total? In the sense that there's no, yeah, I'm sure there's very fancy math words for this. Uh, right, there's no overlap. X can't, no, two X's can't go to the same Y. And no y is left out. That's the. Every x maps to a y, but they can map to the same y. Yes. In injection, that's not true. In injection, every x maps to a y, um, and only one, but not every y has to come from an x. And you put them together, you get bijection, and it's all those together. So you have like the one to one. They call this one to one. They also call this over, I think, if you're in the literature. On to, sorry, on to, not over. OK. It's when they're together that it's on to. No, on to is All right, so there's a bunch of math terms, and none of it matters. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, that's over. The one-to-one, -one. yeah. 
All right, I didn't mean for that to like, like be the important. That is not the important part. That's the, when you see those words, you're like, oh yeah, they mean this. So is this reversible, or could you get a different A? This is reversible. Yes. So this is a structure. This is a structure preserving map that can be reversed. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, and of course, it can, it, again, A's don't have to be just A's. They can form this kind of thing. So if you have two map operations in like Haskell or something, and you can reverse, reverse them, such that you can do an um, inequality, and, you know, feed A in this end in the one out the other, it should be the exact same A, right? That, that's a property that should hold. And so we can look at these same functions. Does to JSON hold up? Could we have a from JSON that, that could be isomorphic? Yeah, we could go both ways with that. To list? Probably, yeah. To set? No. We, we already kind of ruled this out before, right? We're not going to be able to go both ways with that. And to bag, same thing. We're going to lose our structure. And the set maintains the ordering in the homomorphism back from? But, but it, it could randomly reorder them. We don't know. OK, I see. Your homomorphism back from bag to list could ensure sort. Yes, under that context, you could. Yeah, for sure. OK, so any questions on homomorphism? Or sorry, isomorphism. You go do into a thing, back from the thing. So it's a pair of morphisms slash homomorphisms, depending on how you want to view that. OK, catamorphism. If you have a bunch of zords, they converge into a megazord. This is a catamorphism. <laughs> uh, probably you've, you've heard of this, this type signature, this A, to B, B, A and B to B. I think I messed this slide up, too. These are backwards somehow. That's supposed to be the first slide. If you have A and B to B, so we have an individual Zord and a Megazord, we can merge them in until we are left with just a Megazord, after we've applied that enough times. And this should be hopefully familiar as something that looks like fold, one of the variations of fold. Um, so we can have an FA and a B and end up with our B. So catamorphisms are about taking a bunch of things and transforming them into something else. Now often that is thought of as like a reduce or a fold kind of operation that is um, sometimes slightly um, misguided, or not misguided, but misleading. So we can take a list of ints and pass in like plus or something and, and reduce down to a single value, right? We've all seen that kind of thing. But we could take a list of ints, or you can same thing, list of ints go to a string, but it's equally as valid to take a list of ints and go to a list of ints. That's a perfectly fine catamorphism. If you look at the literature on there, they're going to say that it's a, a transformation from one algebra to another. What they mean by algebra here is like a set of operations that can be done to this thing to a set of operations that can be done to this thing. So you can go from types to types that are not like take a bunch of things and squish them at, down to one. That's not like the intuition here. So these are, these will all be valid like signatures for catamorphisms. Um, you can produce a new collection. You can have a catamorphism, uh, well, yeah, I'll stick with that. Um, what is my next? Okay, so any questions on catamorphism? Uh, you could do a catamorphism, like catamorphism can be in uh, some senses just a bigger tent for homomorphism to live in, right? So it's perfectly fine to have a catamorphism that just like adds one to every element in the list. That's also a homomorphism. It's also about catamorphism. Like you're not required to produce like a different type at the other end. And we often use fold, I mean, we use fold to implement map, right? <laughs> so like this is clearly a, a bigger tent than, than what map can do. Map is a more restrictive version of this. Say again? Oh, where you, you grab an element out? Like, let's say you have a user ID, and then you'll find, and, and then some transaction, you want to sum them up by the user ID. Right? Certainly, certainly. Like, find all the ones that have that user ID and, and aggregate yeah, them so together. An example from a list, a list, like a but just yeah. map is also a catamorphism. Right. What's not a catamorphism? Um, well, we'll get to anamorphism, <laughs> which is not a catamorphism. <laughs> So, so, so something that you wouldn't implement with fold is a, is a fairly good explanation for that. How about <laughs> That's different. <laughs> that, that is correct. That is, that is a different thing. Yeah. Um, catamorphism? 
Has everyone done map e or uh, foldy type things before, or reduce or aggregate, depending on your language? It's pretty common. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, catamorphism. It sounds like this big thing, and it's really just go from an algebra to an algebra, and by algebra meaning the, like either the ADT or the you know and the operations that could go on it. Usually, you're converting between those. Oh, there's a um, you will hear them talked about as generalizations of folds. Um, and you'll hear the term initial object or initial algebras. What they're talking about that in that context is the data type you're going from, like the ADT you're going from in the source to the ADT that you're arriving in at the end. So if you're folding from you know, a list of type A to a list of type B, here's your initial algebra, and here's your, you know, the algebra that you've created throughout the catamorphism. You'll hear those kinds of terms. Okay. I'm okay. And Anamorphism is to take uh, a collection of things like the Power Rangers and to produce a bunch of values out of it. So out of the Power Rangers, we can produce individual Power Rangers in Zords. This is unfold. So we have fold that usually takes a bunch of things and smushes them down to one. This can be thought of as the dual of that. It's a single thing that we can grab values out of to create like a stream of things, right? Right, so we go through the process, and often anamorphisms are collected into some sort of structure at the end, like a list. Often you unfold them into something. Okay, and you might, uh, I've seen that written both, both these ways. I think the top one is far more common. So you have a function that go, can go from an A to a maybe AB. So the interesting thing here is A is the thing that you're extracting values out of, and what you get back is potentially a pair, and it's potentially because you have to have some way to indicate that you're done. There's no more values to extract. So that's what the maybe's there for. That is the cat as the anamorphism's job. We extract B's out of the A. The anamorphism creates a B out of an A. So if you have a stream of something, but I can then. To do that, right? Yeah, yeah. The anamorphism function will. So these aren't exact type signatures. This is the sense of what's going on. So given this anamorphism. A, there's a way to produce this maybe AB. And the A is sort of the rest of the anamorphism, right? Because often we're consuming it and we're like using it up. It could be an infinite stream. It could be like a generator type thing. But we have to have some way of indicating that we're done and the value that got extracted, the B. Another way of doing this that I've seen is you get back a tuple and a function that tells you if you're done. So you know if there's more values in the, in the anamorphism yet to be extracted. So some examples of that, you can have a string. Is there a way we could take a string and we could produce a list of, really it's like a list of characters, but a list of strings? Can we do that, right? We could just uh, slice off a character at a time and hand it to you until we're out of characters. So in that case, back here, our A would be the string that's getting smaller and smaller, and our B would be the individual character that we're, we're extracting out. And then we would usually take that and stuff it into a list and, and, and aggregate them up. Same thing, we can have a stream and we can read values out of the stream and collect them into a list or some, some other structure. We can take an image and produce a list of pixels or something like that, right? These are all like a big thing and we're drawing elements out of it. So that's anamorphism, the opposite of catamorphism. All right, which brings us to hylomorphism. <laughs> so hylomorphism, oh, absolutely. Sure, I mean, you can have an infinite sequence, right? You could have just a generator that just gives you plus one and yields. And then just the next time it gives you the next number, plus one, and it just yields forever. That, that's an anamorphism. So the thing, the A is the generator, and the B is the value that's coming out of the generator. So yeah, it doesn't have to be a, um, the A does not have to be finite in size, right? This can go on, the A can go on forever. Is that what you were? Um, well, if it gave it to you like one at a time, okay. generator style, that's an anamorphism. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. We're actually going to get done early. We'll have plenty of time to talk about specifics. Uh, hopefully you have questions about specifics. So hylomorphism. So hylomorphism is a anamorphism 
So we had the, the anamorphism where we turned all the rangers into their, uh, got, got, put them in their zords, followed by a catamorphism, which took all the zords and drained them together into a megazord. So anamorphism is a, a sorry, a hylomorphism is an anamorphism followed by a catamorphism. Does that make sense? So, uh, yeah. So this, this step to this step is anamorphism. We've taken a, a, a thing, the Power Rangers, and turned them into individual Power Rangers in their zords. And sort of, we sort of skipped a step here where we've collected that into like a list, like a collection, like an intermediate collection. And then we've taken that collection, we fed it into basically fold to catamorphic, catamorphize it down into a single thing. And again, it doesn't have to be a single thing. Like we talked about with Fold, it could be another collection of things. We could go from original Power Rangers to whatever, season seven Power Rangers or something like that. Yes, sir? Uh, you, keep, you keep saying uh, down to a single thing. That guy's really big. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, in, into a single thing? <laughs> Sure. So, um, and it, folds don't have to have a cardinality of one. A, a catamorphism can be a list to a list. That's okay. It is often a list to a single value. That's, that's a frequent like use of it, but it doesn't have to be that. Average. Yeah, that's a good example. Average sum, those kinds of things. The reporting example, or like find all the users with this transaction and give me a total. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yes up to the size of the original thing, okay. right? The catamorphism, would it be valid for the catamorphism to produce new elements? Uh, I actually don't know if that would classify as a catamorphism anymore. Usually you are going same or smaller, and often it's smaller. Number, cardinality, not size. Okay, so hylomorphism. We go anamorphism to make a bunch of stuff, catamorphism to aggregate it in some way. So those two steps back to back is a hylomorphism. Um, in, in the sense that map in sort of in parallel is creating a bunch of things and reduce is putting back. So map reduce is an example of this kind of concept. Yes. Um, right. So this is um, th th now there's an interesting property that hylomorphisms have, which is if you don't actually create that intermediate step, you can get some interesting things. So if you anamorph the rangers and get a single uh, zord out, you could immediately start reducing it down into a megazord, and you'll have one piece. And then you can do it for two, and three, and four, and then you know, finally you're done. And what this does is it saves you the intermediate collection. It saves you this right here. So if you've ever heard of like stream fusion in Haskell, this is kind of the idea of what's going on here, is that we don't have to create an intermediate thing, we can take, we can plug the producer of anamorphism into the reducer of catamorphism and build directly through. This is an interesting property. So if anyone has not heard, tomorrow Harold Carr at 2 p.m. is doing refactoring recursion. And it is talking about these kinds of things, talking about recursion schemes, which is a pretty cool mechanism for doing some of these things. He will be using the word hylomorphism, <laughs> which is why he wanted me to give this talk. So you're welcome, Harold. That's why I'm here. Um, so hylomorphism. It's a combination of those two things. So it's an ana or an unfold, followed by a kata and fold. And the specifics are very specific to like the language and, and the library and the exact data structures that you're using, how you glue these, these things together. Um, you don't have to avoid creating intermediate structure. That's fine. But there are performance reasons why it might be very advantageous to not create an intermediate structure. Does that make sense? OK. So. Um, Sorry, that's the last one that I wanted to cover because I didn't know how long we were going to take. There are a couple others that we could talk about. Um, the, the main one that I would bring up is this thing called an um, metamorphism. And a metamorphism is the exact opposite. It is a catamorphism followed by an anamorphism. So we catamorph and then we anamorph. Not the book series, anamorphs, anamorphism. So we do those two things. And, th and so what you're going to see, hopefully, having gone through these, now when you see these words, you're going you're to see little variations. These are like a lot of the foundational ones. You see all these like, oh, it's a blah with a blah. right? It's a, it's a this followed by this. There's all kinds of names for 
you know, an isomorphism that's also a whateverism, you know, those, those kinds of combinations. Um, yes, so those are the morphisms that I set out to cover. Do we go too fast? Do we not cover anything? Want to go back for anything? Yes, yes. From, from the, you could consider that whole thing. Uh, well, so, okay. Uh, well, no. So what's the structure that you care about in your homomorphism? That you have a set of, a collection of rangers? Yeah, and they map to one. So yeah, we, have a, we can map from the rangers to the rangers. Yes, it, it, yeah, to the, yeah, all the rangers in the world. Yeah, that is a homomorphism. If you, so yeah, you can take the, all the bits, shove it into a box, and say, look, I have a new homomorphism at a much higher level <laughs> with a lot of stuff inside. Absolutely. Is that always true? Um, the catamorphism is not required to preserve your structure, so no. In this specific case, the catamorphism did preserve our structure, um, so we're OK. No, because this is super general, and people disagree on even what the word homomorphism means <laughs> in different branches of mathematics. Like in some branches, they are different. Like in category theory, homomorphism and morphism are different. But in most other branches of mathematics, they're synonyms for each other. I mean, like, uh, for example, homomorphism. So what I could imagine it has to be, uh, behave as if it is uh, this anamorphism or followed by anamorphism. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, but I don't know what law you write to, okay. like, what, what thing I could assert with an equal sign in between about them. Because it's not like you're going to end up at the same, it's not like isomorphism where you can say you get back the same value when you're done. Although, isomorphism, in, in like a half school kind of thing, we would expect the exact same value. But we could say that we preserved the structure in both ways, and some stuff changed. It just wasn't the stuff that we cared about as the structure, and we're still OK. It's still an isomorphism, but it's not the exact same value. Right? Like maybe you don't care about, um, maybe you have a bunch of floating point numbers, doubles. And you don't care that they're doubles. You just care that they're numbers, and you're going to round them anyways. So you could, as part of a homomorphism, convert them all to ints, and then as an inverse homomorphism, convert them all back to doubles. Well, from one perspective, we've totally lost information. This is not an isomorphism. We've lost all our floating point precision. But if you don't care about that, then it's fine. It's an isomorphism. You're good. They're isomorphic to each other. But then if you care about the structure of the, say, flat operation, so the monoid on real numbers, then it's not preserved, right? Because uh, if you do this, because if you uh, you, you're not just losing it, the information once. It's you're saying after you're back at a double, you've lost something? Um, so it's not the same if you go from uh, real, from doubles to ints, um, and then add them as ints and go no, back to doubles. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just doubles to ints, like we map. We map floor, <laughs> or, right, you know, to ints kind of thing, and then we map to float. So we went from 5.1 to 5. If we didn't care about the floating pointness, we're back to doubles, and we may consider that an isomorphism. Even though generally I think people would say that's not an isomorphism because we didn't get back the exact same thing. But again, homomorphisms are about what you care about. Right, but if you, I mean, if you have this additional structure, the flat operation, uh, then it's not even homomorphism, right, one way. Uh, because it's not the same if you uh, right. first so, or first and then a, a homomorphism doesn't mean the exact same operations work. You could go from one structure into another structure, and none of the operations that worked work over here, but the structure has been preserved. So if we, take a, if we take a list of numbers, and we join that into a string of numbers with commas in between, certainly no math operations are going to work on that string. But that can be a homomorphism because we preserve the structure, the order, the values are still there, and we can tell that there's a bunch of values. Then I'm not clear on what you mean by structure, because then I would assume, OK, on, on list, I would have the structure of a monoid, say, where the operation would be concatenation, and then one would be preserved in so, the transformation. So if the structure is that it is a monoid, then you absolutely lose the structure of it is a monoid when you join them into a string oh, with okay. commas. Oh, OK. Right. What I'm saying is you've lost, you've lost the um, Individual elements of this are monoidal and can be like combined. Is that is that the structure you were talking about? No, 
Oh, you're uh, telling the whole list is monoidal? OK. How do you still can concatenate strings? So, so what's the structure that we lost when going from a list of ints to a string of int values in the string with commas in between? Um, OK, then I'm not entirely. Maybe it doesn't have the addition Certainly, like, yeah. There's no guarantee that homomorphism, the operations that work on A work on B, on the other end. If we, if we go through our homomorphism, we could just use this as an example. When we go through our homomorphism, there's no guarantee that the B's operations are the same set of things as A's operations. But then that means you don't care about the operation on the first type in the first place. Right, you care about. Structure, whatever structure is for you. You get to decide what the structure means. But for me, the structure is the operation. <laughs> then you would have no homomorphisms for that type. For, from that view of structure, there are zero homomorphisms. Oh. Because the only thing that works that does exactly what you want, you know, has all the operations on that type, is that type. That's why we have a type system, right? No. Why? So if you have an isomorphism. Okay, so if you have an isomorphism, you're switching types under the hood, then, right? Then Sure. But we're talking about homomorphisms here, right? Right, but uh, take again list and set, and the, the monoid structure on list is the concatenation, and uh, in set it would be union, so the concatenation would be mapped to union and set, and it would, what would be preserved is if I first concatenate the two lists and then mm -hmm. uh, convert them to set, it would be the same as if I converted the two lists to set and then the union. Sure. So that's what I think is the preservation of structure. So. That's the structure that you care about. Yeah. But someone else could care about different structures, such as order and number of elements. Sure. And for them, converting to a string is a perfectly fine homomorphism. Th that's, yeah. So again, it depends. It's, you get to choose the structure that is important to you. And from different points of view, you'll pick different structures. So homo versus ISO, what's the difference? Is it synonymous here? ISO can go the other way. ISO has a dual. Like that? Yeah, so that's ISO. Homo is just the one of those, right? Assuming those are structure preserving. We, we, that's not in the type. So you're right? using homomorphism and morphism as analysis. Well, a homomorphism preserves some concept of structure okay. where morphism is not obliged to do that. Okay. You can have const and feed anything into const, <laughs> right? And it will it'll be an A to a V, but there's no guarantee it's going to preserve anything. Yeah. And and this is specifically an ISO, yeah. Sorry, could you say that again? Paramorphism. I don't remember what a paramorphism is. Does anyone, can anyone help me out? What's a paramorphism? We can look it up. What is a paramorphism? Yeah, I can't read from here. And an apomorphism. Apomorphism. OK, so a paramorphism, extension of, so it's a catamorphism to deal with a form which eats its argument and keeps it too. So my guess is that it's going to fold, and it's going to produce an aggregate value while it folds, but it's also going to keep that value along. So it's probably producing like a bunch of nested tuples or something like that as it goes. And then the final tuple will have the final fold result, plus you've got all the intermediate ones. But see, you know that now, because half those words are not nonsense anymore, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so that's why I said there's a lot of these isms that you're going to be able to take the base and, and extend to. Check out the chart on Matryoshka. Yeah, the, actually, that's a good point. Um, if you look at Matru, uh, Matryoshka, is it just Matryoshka? Yeah, I, I, in their documentation, they have like a big map of isms, yeah. like in, and like the, some of the structure of how they, we could just go find that. Matryoshka. Yeah. Oh, geez. I can't actually see from here. RYO? Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, now I have to find my thing again. Those are Matryoshka dolls. Do you ever wonder where the name comes from? There we go. Oh, it's not that one? Oh, there we go. 
Here you go. It's a big, wide, wonderful world out there. Metamorphisms and zipomorphisms and codynamorphism. Yeah, so if you want, there's a lot of applications of these, and these all feed into the um, these all feed into the recursion schemes concept because morphisms are about like specific transformations between things, and recursion schemes are about ways of applying specific um, transformations sort of in a generic way to lots of different structures, in a way that map is too spe specific. Yeah, so that's that's good research right there. All righty. Anything else? So it's a monomorphism oh. and epimorphism. Uh, right monomorphism is just, it's, it's a generalization of injective, and epimorphism is a generalization of surjective. surjective? Yeah. Well, you should come and give an advanced morphisms <laughs> talk next year, <laughs> and you can pick up here and start off with uh, those. Um, cool. Um, so anyways, this is me. I'm Dave Kuntz. If you want to follow me, I'm dkuntz, and I have a podcast called LambdaCast, which teaches people functional programming without ever using, like, Haskell or F-sharp. We talk about C-sharp and JavaScript and Ruby. But we also talk about functional programming. And every once in a while, we have to talk about things like Haskell because we do higher kind of types or something. But if you want to, hopefully there's an episode there that's interesting to you. Um, and we have not talked about, uh, we had an episode about morphisms there, which is also what inspired this talk. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for coming.